Hey YouTubers, Steven here. Um, in this video, what I'm going to talk to you today about is uh, bolt plans. Um, now I started, you know, scratching down on a piece of paper, you know, and doodling, you know, what kind of bolt plan that uh, I'd like to go with. You know, do I want to go with a regular uh, utility boat or do I want to go with uh, catamaran style? Um, I knew I wanted something that uh, I could have several seats in and that I could, you know, stow some uh, fishing gear or um, camping gear or picnic basket and stuff, the kids. Um, so I spent a lot of time doodling trying to think, okay, what would be the best boat plan that I could look for? Um, be easy enough to put together, you know, in the backyard and, and be durable. Um, and yet still be fairly light that I wouldn't need a boat trailer for. Um, there are several web websites out there of uh, manufacturers who actually build and, and sell these boats, uh, which kind of gave me a rough idea of what I was looking for. Uh, but these boats are very expensive, um, and it's probably why most of these companies uh, aren't in business. So I started searching around looking to see if I could find websites. Uh, the first one that I found um, looked like it was from Popular Mechanics back in the, the 50s or 60s. And some of the boat plans were, were pretty neat. Um, you know, from little small boats that were just as long as, um, as your legs were if you were sitting in it with, uh, you know, paddle wheels on either side definitely not what I was looking for. Um, there was one boat plan in there that was like today's sea -Doo. Um Actually the boat part portion of it itself was almost identical to today's sea -Doo, but yet it had, had a big bracket on the back uh, to mount an outboard motor which uh, I found kind of comical but uh, most of the boat plans that I found uh, were too heavy construction. Uh, much heavier than what I was looking for, um, you know, with uh, a full frame under the uh, the skin of the boat, um, ribs, you know, it looked like a lot of work um, and way too heavy uh, for what I wanted, you know. The, these boats were all, you know, oh, you can put this car engine in it and get this transmission and you have your own homemade speed boat. You know, down the road, be a pretty interesting project, you know, if I had a garage that uh, I could work in and, and actually construct a, a boat, boat like that, but um, it's not what I was looking for, so I searched some more. Um, found several websites where there's uh, nautical engineers. They, um, you could basically tell them what you're looking for and they'll design the boat plans, uh, but most of those sites, it was quite a bit of money for them to do that. Um, then I did find a website um, called Uncle John's Country Store. Now that's not the URL for the website, but I will post it here. And uh, you've got four styles of boat plans that you can buy. One's a canoe, uh, one's a John boat, uh, one's a skiff. Um, I don't know what you would call the fourth one, but anyways, I back to the story. Uh, so I was looking at the plans for the skiff. And one of the things that I really liked about the website is uh, there's a lot of people that built these boats and bought the plans from the website, which uh, I believe are about $25 US. And um, they have the pictures um, showing every step of the way of building their boat, which to me was really good because then you, you can actually see how simple the construction is. Um, and on the website you can also download a, a copy of the plans but there's no dimensions in it so you can see how easily um, how easy the instructions are to read uh, so I was said okay I'm gonna I'm gonna build the skiff I'll use that as as my boat um, in the in the description of the boat it said the boat was about a hundred pounds uh, when it was fully constructed and hundred pounds that's what I was looking for. That's that's something that I, I can move around myself. Now, granted, thinking I'm going to have all these mechanical parts in here, you know, of um, uh, 
bicycle parts and chains and sprockets and everything so my weight's going to go up quite a bit from, from the 100 pounds but should still be able to you know pick it up move it around with uh, with the assistance of one of my, my kids uh, it's not going to be something that's you know six seven hundred pounds that I'm gonna have to have a trailer for um, so from those plans I, I started thinking okay I'm gonna look at the mechanics of this that'll be another episode um, I took the plans and basically not so much redesigned but tweaked the dimensions um, there was a few things I didn't like you know like the sidewalls weren't very high on it um, I think the the original plans called for the the sidewall to be 15 inches um, looking at how I was going to put the pedals on the boat uh, it was going to be similar to a recumbent um, a recumbent bike if you're not familiar uh, they're the ones that you may see driving down the road um, where they're they're sitting back and their feet are almost chest level or you know about abdomen level anyways um, so I wanted to make sure that if I put the boat on top of the, the van um, that I would have enough enough clearance that you know the the bicycle pedals and whatnot wouldn't be sticking way out of the top um, so uh, the other thing too, I wanted to make sure that uh, some of the lakes that I go on have some pretty big waves and if I've got the kids in the boat, uh, fishing gear, that's going to displace the boat deeper into the water. So I wanted to make sure I had lots of room. Uh, so I ended up doing the math and uh, changing the boat plans that um, the sidewalls were 24 inches high or 2 feet versus a 15. Uh, the next thing I wanted to change was the length of the boat. Uh, in the plans, the the boat was uh, I think 11 and a half feet. Uh, I wanted something a little longer because uh, if I'm going to put seats in it, I have to you know remember okay I'm going to have all these pedals in in here. I'm going to have you know a bunch of uh, chains and bike sprockets and. A uh, little transmission on the back. I'm, I'm already thinking, you know, okay, in the back of the boat, I'll have a little compartment that I can flip the back up on it, on it you know, access, you know, the uh, the bike chains and the sprockets. And um, if down the road, um, have a little space that I could put a battery in there if I wanted to put uh, navigation lights on my boat so I could play with it at night. Um, so, so, I got the wood from work and most of the crates come with a lot of metal hardware on them um, but they weren't glued or screwed on so it, it took some time and some patience uh, with heavy leather gloves and screwdriver to, uh, to pry all the metal hardware off and then once I got all the hardware off um, I organized everything uh, by size and then uh, taking my bow plans you know looking ahead um, I took my widest pieces and put them aside for the bottom of the boat and then I took the rest of the pieces and uh, I cut them to the width for the sidewalls. Um, then what I did, I took my table saw, um, I cut a 45 degree angle on all the pieces so I could join them together and I made a, a really long workbench uh, using some pallets and um, some OSB so that I, I'd have a big workbench that I, I could assemble everything together out in the backyard. Um, once all the pieces were, were glued together, I took a fiberglass cloth, I cut it into four inch strips, and then uh, I fiberglass cloth and resined all the seams. And then once um, all the fiberglass resin was all hardened, um, I flipped the the sidewalls over and repeated the process on um, on all the seams on the other side. Um, I cut the rest of the pieces that I needed for the bow and for the transom. And, uh, and w once I got those together, then I started thinking, okay, I need to look at putting in seats first before I, you know, I put the bottom of the boat on. Um, I I placed my seat uh, in the middle of the boat um, which is different from the plans. The the plans actually showed uh, three seats and um, um, 
I had to take into consideration, you know, where the pedals were going to be. Um, and if I was out on the lake by myself, I, I wanted to make sure that uh, the boat was balanced in the water. I didn't want the, the transom to be running too low in the water if I was in the back, or driving the bow in, into the waves uh, if I was too far forward. I also angled the, the bench part of the seat so that um, when I'm sitting in it, I'm in a, in a reclined position. Um, to make it more comfortable, like a like a recumbent, you know, my feet are, are going to be up off the bottom of the boat. And once I got uh, the seats in place, uh, the middle seat and the bow seat, um, what I did was I made sure to fiberglass uh, underneath those those parts, uh, mainly because if I put the bottom of the boat on, uh, I'm probably not going to be able to reach all those spots, and I wanted to make sure that. Um, the boat was as watertight as possible uh, inside and out. <clears throat> you know, as much as you may try to uh, not get any water inside the boat, you're going to get water inside the boat. And I just didn't want the water penetrating the wood and and um, you know rotting it. Um, it is an experimental boat, and it may not come out you know perfect, just like you you'd buy one in the store. But I wanted it to at least last, you know, get it out on the water, have some fun with it, and if I got, you know, five or six years out of it, great. I mean, who knows? Maybe down the road uh, I'll build another boat, because I do have several ideas in, in mind what I would like to do, you know, if I build another boat. Uh, but I'll use, you know, quality materials and uh, I'll make sure that it is as perfect as it can be. But anyways, I digress. Uh, so once I got the sides together and got the seats in place, um, then I pieced together uh, the remaining pieces of plywood for the bottom. Um, did the same thing as I did with the sides. I used carpenter's glue, um, glued all the seams together, then I fiberglass clothed the seams and used fiberglass resin. There are better fiberglass um, materials out there that you can use other than resin. Resin is pretty much the cheapest but um, at forty dollars a gallon uh, Canadian um, gets pretty pricey when you start looking at how many gallons you're, you're going to actually need so uh, being a recycling project I, I wanted to keep this as, as inexpensive as, as possible so I got the bottom of the boat on um, basically I laid the sheet on top uh, traced it out a couple of times with uh, with a pencil and then uh, you know from there I used my jigsaw cut out the outline and then uh, I screwed it down with uh, to as many points as I as I could uh, there is a center beam that runs from the transom to the bow uh, which gave me a, a really good spot to, uh, to drive a lot of wood screws up through it and then uh, I fiberglass clothed all around the edge and fiberglass resin uh, the bottom of it. So my boat's really starting to come together now. So on the next um, episode, um, I'll go over the, uh, the logistics and, and the mechanics behind um, my madness, if you will. So uh, come along with me and we'll go on to the next one. See ya.